Good morning, class. Our lesson for today is about equal employment opportunity. So without further delay, let's go right into this. Legal issues are present in almost all aspects of employment, from the recruitment and selection of applicants to their separation from employment. That's why a company through the HR must be careful and must be cautious from the start when recruiting and selecting workers because people are now becoming more knowledgeable about their rights. Therefore, you need to create a sense of equality for job seekers without favoring anyone. You need to provide them with an impression that they have equal chances. On the website of U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, they wrote that to discriminate against someone means to treat that person differently or less favorably for some reason. Discrimination can occur while you are at school, at work, or in a public place such as a mall or subway station. You can be discriminated against by school friends, teachers, coaches, co-workers, managers, or business owners. Discrimination is an unfair treatment because of your race, color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, gender identity, and sexual orientation, national origin, disability, age, or genetic information. On the website of U.S. Department of Labor, it was written there that employment discrimination generally exists where an employer treats an applicant or employee less favorably merely because of a person's race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, disability, or status as a protected veteran. It may also occur if an employer disciplines, terminates, or takes an unfavorable action against an employee or job applicant for discussing, disclosing, or asking about pay. Employment discrimination can be against a single person or a group. Discrimination can be avoided by applying the so-called bona fide occupational requirement. So what is bona fide occupational requirement? It means that the company must be able to prove that the worker's requirement is indeed essential. For example, it is not a discrimination against other participants or other applicants when the company requires a worker with a pleasant personality and smooth skin due to the position of skin clinic receptionist. That is not a discrimination because the business will be affected if the worker's requirements are not met. Another example is if the company is seeking models of height enhancement vitamins, for example, it is not a discrimination against other applicants if the workers they are seeking is at least six feet tall. Another example is if the company only selects men with large bodies because they need casino bouncers, bouncers it doesn't 
constitute discrimination against others. As, as we continue, let us discuss about the two categories of people protected by equal employment opportunity laws or the EEO laws. The first group or category is the so-called protected classifications. According to the University of Illinois, a protected classification is a group of people who share a common trait and who are protected by applicable law from being discriminated against on the basis of that trait or membership in that group. Example, the gender, skin color, age, ethnicity, etc. The second category is the so-called protected groups. In each protected classification, there are groups of people under it. Those people, they are the ones being referred to as protected groups. For example, under the classification of gender, there are males, there are females, and there are LGBTQ. The lesbian, the gay, the bisexual, the transgender, and the queer. Gender should not be the reason of you being discriminated. You have a right to be employed no matter what your gender is, providing that you are capable and qualified. Gender is not the basis to determine whether you are human beings or not. You are human beings despite or in spite of your gender. However, that doesn't mean that the discipline will disappear. You still have to follow company policies. And if flirting is prohibited in the, in the workplace because of its negative effect in the work, then follow the rules. If you are being punished by not following the rules, then you are not being discriminated because of your gender. You are just being fat punished because of your disobedience to the policy. The same holds true for skin color, age, disability, or ethnicity, and religion. It's not about these things that make a company decides to hire you or not. It's about your ability and qualification. Those are the bases. Another point to discuss is about the two types of discrimination. The first type of discrimination is the so-called Desperate treatment discrimination. Desperate treatment discrimination is a direct act of an employer intentionally treating employee or potential employee differently based on their gender, skin color, age, religion, etc. The second type is the is the desperate 
impact discrimination. Desperate impact discrimination. This is an indirect act of an employer. When a policy or standard related to work causes unequal opportunities to individuals from various pr protected groups. Example. Example of disparate treatment discrimination. As employer, you had all the employees drug tested because you were suspicious of your employees who live in this quarter area. But it turned out that those who tested positive were from the subdivision. That you have already shown those who live in this quarter area that you are suspicious to them. That is a direct, that is a desperate tre treatment discrimination. The desperate impact discrimination is that as an employer, you had all the employees drug tested because you want safety in the workplace. But you never thought that you have employees who are relatives of famous drug lords. They're offended, they will be offended, but it's not your intention. Another example is refusing, refusing to hire, hire a lady. Because she is a Muslim or because she is weak or because she is already 40 years old. That is a desperate treatment discrimination. In desperate impact, refusing to hire a lady because the company only needs male construction workers for a specific assignment. So that is not intentional. There is so-called affirmative action. Affirmative action is a policy that aims to boost the employment and educational opportunities for individuals who are underrepresented in various areas of our society. Taking into account individuals, race, sex, or, or religion when hiring is a common practice for businesses and the government to implement affirmative action. Let me read to you an excerpt from the writing of Binel de Lagua. Uh, he, he is an executive vice president at the Development Bank of the Philippines. And you can read this in the business world, the bworldonline.com. This was published before the COVID-19 pandemic, 2018, September 2018. And this is the excerpt from that writing. The bottom line is in an unequal world, there is a place for intervention through affirmative action to level the playing field. The concept has solid foundation, but its implementing guidelines must also support the realities on the ground. I think there is a need for more writers to publish a kind of topic like this. So that at least in a small way can move those who still does not implement affirmative action. Or those who do implement it, but until now, the implementation has been still not fair. Alright, the lesson is over. And you can now go to your iConnect to take the quiz.